Hello everybody, I'm Eternal Flame here, and today I'm here for a Jujutsu Fury on Sukuna. Now, if you watched my chapter review, you'll know what this Fury is about. But basically, in the chapter, Sukuna began to have an internal dialogue with himself, which I'm going to spend an entire other video just completely breaking down and analyzing it. But there's a more important part I want to talk about, which is the beginning section of it, and that's kind of a part that I focused on in that Fury. Where it seemed more so that Sukuna was having a conversation with somebody internally, rather than he was actually having an internal dialogue dialogue and try and get his own thoughts back on track. Now, there is a chance that this could just be Sakuna literally being crazy, and I'm willing to accept that, but I still wanted to talk about my own theory about what this black box is that Sakuna was talking to. Now, first, I am going to go over the reason why I do think it's someone else, and then I'm going to go over what the identity of it is and why that'll be important for the plot later. Now, I won't read out the whole conversation, but the main crux of it is basically it seems a lot more like a conversation, with Sakuna saying things that would normally be said as responses and not really just someone doing their own realization. Because he says words like exactly, and then he says things that are responses that are like, that's who I am, I haven't changed. Right, a way to pass time until my death. That's all other people are to me. Like, if you were trying to resolve yourself and get yourself back on the path, you wouldn't be saying things like exactly to your own thoughts, or that's who I am, I haven't changed. You wouldn't be saying that, you'd just be rethinking about those words and letting those words bounce around in your head. You wouldn't have response words, which is why it feels a lot more like it's someone talking to him, especially with the specific note that it's a black box reminding him of the words, something that's always been very, very important to Jujutsu Kaisen as a whole, with that being where the cursed technique is stored, as well as the sensor line of Sukuna using the fire arrow. Furthermore, throughout the conversation repeatedly, every time he seems like he's questioning himself, it's a white text, and it's just a normal background. However, every time he is resolving himself and getting himself back on track, the black background appears once again, with everything being inverted. However, I don't think this is the first time we've even seen this black background being referenced, or whatever this entity is that is talking to Sukuna, because I very much do not believe this is just Sukuna resolving himself. I think this is also the holder of the fire arrow directly that was used on Jogo a while back, where there was the black box that appeared and then he said open. While of course the black box could be a sensor, I actually think this is him talking to whatever this entity is in order to gain access to the fire arrow. Now you might be wondering, what is this entity? What could this entity possibly be? Well, I think this entity is how Sukuna became the strongest. In a previous Fury, I talked about the potential that Sukuna had absorbed his brother in order to become the strongest, and that was the forbidden act he had did. That was the forbidden act he had done to get the title of the Fallen from Angel. And that is exactly who I think is the one talking to Sukuna in that moment, Sukuna's own brother, the person that Sukuna absorbed in order to become the Fallen if we assume that theory is true. Now, I would recommend you check out that Fury, but I'm just going to very quickly explain what the Fury is, which the Fury is basically Sakuna was once previously jealous of his brother due to his brother being the stronger of the two of them, so he decided to kill his brother and absorb his brother in a similar way to how Maki, in a similar way to how Mai ended up dying to allow Maki to fully awaken because the two of them were twins, allowing Sakuna to fully unlock his full power, and then he absorbed his brother right after. This is also based on the fact that Tengen wants to be like Sakuna, and Kenjaku kind of makes fun of Tengen for that. So I believe that the forbidden action that Sakuna had done was absorbing his brother and that is what allowed him to enter the true perfect form of Jujutsu Sorcery. And I think now that we actually can see a conversation happening between Sakuna and whatever this black box like entity is, I do believe it is more likely to be this theory is true that Sakuna ended up absorbing his brother and that is how he became the strongest. After all, I can see it being extremely likely that Sakuna's brother would want to set Sakuna right back down the path the path that was required in order to achieve this level of power. Furthermore, it would make a lot of sense that they know exactly which buttons to push in order to get Sakuna right back on the path, as well as how to help Sakuna realize what he really needs to do in that moment, which is destroying Yuji and Yuji's ideals. The one person who went against both Sakuna and his brother and is the literal representation of why they might be wrong. Because if Yuji is right and can manage to pull it off, that means that Sakuna's efforts were for nothing, and that also means the brother's efforts were for nothing and completely invalidated. Because if it was possible to gain strength through ideals, that would mean both of their sacrifices to become the Fallen 
were for nothing. Furthermore, it would also help to explain a few other things, like how Sakuna's body can even function. But it's one thing to have four arms and move the four arms separately, because if you can move two arms and have the two arms do different movements, that's normal. But have you ever tried speaking while thinking about a different sentence in your mind? It is super hard to do, near impossible. However, if there were two brains and two beings inside of Sakuna, it would make sense how the stomach mouth can constantly chant while Sakuna himself is able to still talk like he did so against Kashimo. However, this does also make something else really, really interesting now that I just thought about this. Could it be potentially possible that when Sakuna was talking to Jogo and Kashimo in the afterlife, that the reason why he could still remain in the other world and look at everybody else is because the real Sakuna still remained on the ground while another Sakuna went to the afterlife in order to go talk with them, since Sakuna is two beings. This would also help to explain something else, which is Jogo's belief that Sakuna's curse technique was just slicing and cleaving which would make it so the fire arrow is actually just straight up a different technique than the one Sakuna has access to, but it being the technique of his brother, which is why Jogo wouldn't be able to recognize it, because it wouldn't be the technique of Sakuna he is thinking about, but the technique of Sakuna's own brother. It also would help to explain why the fire arrow could one-shot Maharaga, even though Maharaga had adapted completely to cleave and dismantle by that point, and had adapted to Kuna's curse technique. However, it is also possible that it just didn't count the fire arrow because it was a different property entirely, since we do know Maharaga to separately adapt to infinity as well as the domain expansion as two separate things, so that could very well be possible as well, and I might just be stretching it a little bit with this one. Furthermore, we also know it's possible when twins are in direct contact with each other, even though if one is dead, they can still communicate with each other, for Mai does that in the Nawiya fight, despite being a sword. She is still able to bring Maki into their innate domain and still talk to her. Now, what could this possibly mean for the plot if Sakuna is two beings, and if this theory actually turns out to be true that Sakuna is being convinced by another person to be set on that path? I don't think it's possible at all for anyone to talk no jutsu Sakuna. Sakuna is not being talked down. I'm not going to suggest that, do not worry. What I actually think might be possible though through this is the possibility to remove the other soul from Sakuna and weaken him in the process. If they can at all realize that there is a secondary soul inside of Sakuna and that is how he was able to achieve this level of power, this level of a body that's completely unnatural as the perfect form of jujitsu sorcery, then they'll be able to remove that very power from him and weaken him a bit so it's actually possible to take him on. Now, of course, for obvious reasons, this would still be insanely difficult because this is still Sakuna. Even if they remove that soul, Sakuna would still be insanely powerful because he was still known as the King of Curses even when he was a normal human and not a natural disaster like he is now. But it would still be a good way to set up a weakness for Sakuna and a potential way to take him down, at least weakening him a little bit, which is removing the second soul inside of his body, which is his own brother. However, this is definitely more on the crackpot side of my theories more than usual, but I want to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below on this theory. Y'all think I'm completely insane, y'all think I'm reaching a bit, or y'all think I'm making some amount of sense and you guys have some evidence that might actually help even further than what I'm currently aware of in this theory. I want to see what you guys think in the comment section down below. Hope y'all have a good day. I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.